Wind rushing through your hair, sun shining, and the envy of other drivers as they see someone having more fun on the road than them. Seems like a no-brainer. But the convertible is disappearing. The drop top is an automotive icon and has been found on some of history's most famous models. But in the 21st century, it makes up a tiny portion of sales. We used to have a, a large number of, of front-wheel drive entry-level convertibles out there from the, the Sebring to the PT Cruiser to the Camry um, and, and to the Volkswagen Beetle. And now none of those vehicles are with us anymore. Um, and so the, that whole part of the market has, has really gone away, which is the, the entry-level convertible. Why have convertibles fallen out of favor? And will they make a comeback? In the early days of the automotive industry, pretty much every vehicle was topless, or at least open air. Driving was a fair weather activity. Roads weren't great, so driving in the rain or snow would be undesirable. The first fully affordable enclosed vehicle was an Essex, built in 1920. Here's a closed car that's targeted at sort of the mass market, and it's initially priced not a whole lot higher than the open model Essex, and within a couple of years, it, it falls to the same price, in fact. And, and that really changes things. Uh, at the same time, of course, the roads are getting better now. We're getting paved highways even between cities, and driving is starting to become a more uh, year-round activity, so people start to prefer the closed cars. And by the 1930s, you've seen things completely flip. Now the, uh, the closed cars are the quote-unquote cheap cars, and the convertibles are the more expensive ones, whereas it had been just the opposite even into the 1920s. Um, convertibles then start to, to not go away entirely, but they become associated with the higher-end kind of luxury models. But then World War II flipped everything around yet again. American GIs returning home brought with them a fascination with European cars, especially the small British sports cars made by brands such as Triumph and MG. Bemused American manufacturers introduced vehicles that would become legends, cars like the Chevrolet Corvette and the Ford Thunderbird. It was about American fun and freedom and you know a vacation you can take every day. Like you might not want your convertible top down in Michigan in October, maybe in November, but you know, in June when it's 75 degrees and sunny and you're heading out to Lake Michigan, what better way to start your, your freedom, your vacation than dropping the top on that Mustang and enjoying the wind in your hair and the sound coming out of that exhaust pipe. This is when the convertible began to symbolize freedom, fun, and leisure. So convertibles by the 1950s are, are everywhere again. And I would say that was probably the high watermark of the convertible on American roads, the late 50s into the early 1960s, because you can get them not just on expensive cars or on sports cars, but you can get them on you know, like the family sedan or even uh, otherwise modestly priced uh, compact cars. But in the 1970s, the convertible began its slow disappearing act. There have been some brief revivals. The 1982 Chrysler LeBaron and its close relative, the Dodge 400, were together the first American-made convertibles released since the 1976 Cadillac Eldorado. In recent years, the market has shrunk even further. In 2005, convertibles made up 2.1% of new car sales. Numbers fell to about 1.5% during the recession spurred by the financial crisis. As of 2021, they make up a mere 0.46% of sales. In other words, only one out of every 200 cars sold now is a convertible. The convertible has also gone upscale. In 2011, the average convertible price was $45,000. By 2021, it was $67,000. In 2005, the seven top-selling convertibles were the Ford Mustang, the Chrysler PT Cruiser, the Volkswagen Beetle, the BMW 3 and 4 Series, the Chevrolet Corvette, the Chrysler Sebring, and the Mini Cooper. Apart from the BMWs, those cars were all mainstream, non-luxury vehicles with some sports cars mixed in. However, in 2020, the top seven were the Mazda MX-5 Miata, the 3 and 4 Series BMW, the Ford Mustang, the BMW Z4, the Mercedes-Benz C-Class, the Mercedes-Benz E-Class, and the Porsche 911. All of them are either luxury vehicles or sports cars. It's kind of returning to its European roots, as a matter of fact. 
uh, European share of convertible sales uh, continues to increase every year. Um, even as sales have fallen, it's, it's become an increasingly European-centric market. So what happened? It is tough to say, but experts point to several likely reasons. One, convertibles simply aren't that practical. Uh, a convertible is not something you need, something that you buy if you can afford to have, uh, have the luxury associated with it. Two, the roof has to go somewhere, often the trunk. Millennials are overtaking baby boomers as the biggest cohort of car buyers and are reaching ages where they need cars with seating for several and enough storage. Perhaps that's why the age group that drives convertibles skews toward the age of 55 and older. Three, cars have become more expensive and buyers may not have the cash to buy a second car just for fun. Convertibles already are more expensive than their hardtop counterparts. The Ford Mustang hardtop starts at just over $27,000. The convertible starts at nearly $33,000. The Porsche 911 Carrera starts at just over $100,000. But the cabriolet version, another name for convertible, is over $114,000. Some say the invention of unibody manufacturing makes building a convertible a bit more complicated. They have to be built out more in the doors and chassis to make up for the loss of structural strength. Their shrinking market share might actually be making convertibles less affordable. If automakers are going to offer convertibles, they have to make more per unit. And so we see kind of a, a chicken and an egg, which is lower volumes necessitating higher prices, which necessitate lower volumes. Um, and, and we continue to circle downward with convertibles. Hardtop convertibles, which have become more common, are still more expensive and take up yet even more space in the vehicle. The standard Mazda MX-5 Miata comes only in a soft top convertible format for a starting price of about $26,000 but you can opt up for the MX-5 Miata RF, a retractable hardtop version that starts at just over $33,000. Apparently, some manufacturers have decided retractable hardtops are not worth it. BMW ditched the retractable hardtop in favor of a traditional fabric top convertible for its 2021 4 Series Coupe. Four, soft tops do not age well. Commonly known as rag tops, they are typically made in part out of cloth. They are less durable than a steel roof and easier to break into. Five, the rise of sunroofs, especially the large panoramic ones seen on newer cars may have made a convertible top even less appealing. Another thing to note about convertibles, they are rather unusual in the automotive industry in that their sales are highly seasonal. The selling season begins typically in March and the peak months are April and May. So there is a short window for buying or selling a convertible. Of course, all car sales do vary by season a bit, but not like that. Uh, so it's, it's a hard market to get the, the volume right. If you don't have enough convertibles, uh, you, you kind of miss the selling season. And if you build too many, uh, you've got a difficult time trying to sell a convertible in winter months. Finally, convertibles may be a casualty of the changing cultural role of the car in America. When they were at that high watermark in the 1950s and 60s, convertibles and cars in general became symbols of freedom, fun, and adventure. Today, many drivers, about two-thirds of them according to recent surveys, think of their cars primarily as appliances meant for commuting and running errands. Some sporty American cars, such as the Mustang, Camaro, and Corvette still have convertible versions. It's currently in our portfolio right now through the 2021 model year. In the past, we've had it like on Shelby GT500s. Um, you know, depending upon the, the years, Carol, if you think about his in the 60s, some of the most expensive 350s that go across auction are those four GT350 convertibles he did. Um, it, it's, it's in our lineup and we are happy that it's there um, from the people who use it from a rental car standpoint, right? Where they just take their vacation, literally, <laughs> it's the vacation car that they choose to the folks who actually buy the Mustangs themselves for a full-time, for the full-time vehicle. There are also small sports cars from Japanese makers, such as the MX-5 Miata and the Nissan 350Z Roadster. But buyers who want a new convertible might find that they need to go high-end. European brands like Porsche, Audi, Mercedes, and BMW all offer convertibles in soft top and in some cases hard top varieties. Buyers priced out by European luxury prices might find themselves turning to the used market. Auto industry analysts say that some hope for the convertible may lie in an unlikely place, the sport utility vehicle. Car makers have tried to bring convertibles into the compact crossover segment. 
Two notable examples are the Range Rover Evoque convertible and the Nissan Murano convertible. I think time will will prove out that those two were were just the the early trendsetters, and that they'll actually uh, they'll be a convertible SUV segment. Jomini notes the Jeep Wrangler is a twist on the traditional convertible. It can be driven as an open-air vehicle simply by removing the roof and doors. The Gladiator pickup truck, based on the Wrangler, is also capable of an open-air conversion. The Ford Bronco, perhaps one of the most anticipated vehicle debuts in recent years, also has a removable roof and doors. And the GMC Hummer EV also has some removable panels. And that may be the kind of convertible we're talking about in the future. An SUV um, where you have automakers like Toyota and Nissan and Land Rover, you know, kind of sitting on the sidelines that if they were to go back to their old timey photos, uh, would see that they had a lot of open top SUVs in their history uh, and they could bring those to market uh, fairly easily. But convertible cars are not completely gone yet. A lot of people are waiting for the, the Tesla Roadster to come back and that, that'll be an EV convertible, uh, perhaps the first of its kind. We'll see what else beats it to market. Uh, but a lot of people are waiting for that, and that may be the kind of vehicle that, that could sort of generate enthusiasm once again for, uh, for driving a convertible. A two-seat sports car is not an easy sell for the majority of buyers, but an automaker can make it work if enough consumers feel it will give them something many of them still want, fun.